What's going on guys, Eric here. In this video, we're not going to be doing a passage breakdown. We're just going to go quickly through some discrete questions. Okay, the more questions you do, the more practice questions you do regarding to the MCAT, the higher your score will be. The bigger those jumps. Okay, let's go through these quick. Do it on your own first and then resume the video and hear me go through the questions. All right, see what you got wrong, see what you got right. Yada, 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 yada. Let's do this quick. Bam. All right, this is 14, 15. Pause it whenever you need to. 16. 17. All right, pause whenever you need to. After you're done with that, hear me go through this. Hopefully you get them all right. Let's go. The peptide bond that forms the backbone of proteins is especially stable because it consists of a triple bond, which is no, it does not consist of a triple bond. It consists of a double. There's a carbonyl and there's a nitrogen attached to it, which is an amide bond. It consists of an amide bond. It is, is a carboxylic acid derivative. It is a carboxylic acid derivative. Amide is a carboxylic acid derivative. Well, let's see if there's a better answer. Would result in proteins that denatured easily if they were unstable? Maybe. That could work. But that doesn't really answer the question. Okay. Exhibits resonance stabilization. Yes, this answers the question. Okay. They're telling, they're asking, why is it stable? Why is it stable? It's stable because it exhibits resonance stabilization. And that's between the, the carbon, the carbonyl, that's that double bond. Okay, and there's a nitrogen attached to it. Okay, I'll draw it out really quickly for you guys, okay? I'll draw it out really quick. All right, let's go to the whiteboard. Come on, come on, come on. All right, ready? This is what it is, guys. It's bam, bam, and then there's a nitrogen here, and then bam, bam, bam. Okay, there is the double bond here, and it's resident stabilized. All right, there's actually a lone pair on this nitrogen. So this lone pair here, I'm gonna go here, this double bond can break, come up here, and then this can be also exhibited as this, okay, as a negative charge, double bond, nitrogen, yada, 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 okay? You could have this resin stabilization here. That's what makes it stable, okay? Keep going. Drinking ocean water is ultimately fatal to a human because, all right, I already know the answer to this without looking at the answer choices. The ocean water has a high solute concentration, so water is going to flow out from our cells into the uh, into the surroundings to kind of help that to balance it out. That salt water outside, okay. So this is what's going to happen. All right, this is going to happen. Here is your cell, and then here is the salt water, very high salt. Say salt, a lot of salt. A lot of salt. Where's water gonna flow? From inside the cell to the outside, causing this cell to shrink. Okay, that's what's gonna happen. Water has a very low solute concentration. No, the water has a high solute concentration. The kidney must work very hard to excrete the excessive levels of bivalent ions in the ocean water. Maybe, I don't know if there's bivalent ions in the ocean water, I don't think so. But that doesn't answer the question and what they're asking for and what they're testing. Remember, the MCAT tests your content knowledge. All right. Your content knowledge does not involve whether the ocean water is has bivalent or monovalent ions. The MCAT tests your understanding of osmosis, hypertonic, hypotonic, and isotonic solutions. Okay, so we're gonna go pick an answer based off that. Okay, what I just said, it's kind of common sense but it's not that common when people are taking the mcat all right you got to keep that in the back of your mind to really get majority of questions right a lot of people forget that all right so keep that in the back of your mind the water has a very high solute concentration relative to the body cells resulting in cell shrinkage and death that is absolutely correct that's exactly what happens okay i just described that here cool and then the ocean water contains toxic levels of pollutants again what is the mcat testing MCAT doesn't test your knowledge of environmental pollutants. It tests your knowledge on how water flows, osmosis, all that stuff. 16. In prokaryotes, genes can exist as operons that are transcribed into a polycystronic mRNA containing multiple genes in a single transcript. In eukaryotes, transcripts exist only as monocystronic mRNA containing a single gene. What fundamental genetic difference is responsible for this distinction? Fundamental genetic difference. mRNA is transported outside the nucleus in eukaryotes. This is true. That does happen. Okay, but this is wrong. It's not asking, it's not answering the question. The fundamental 
fundamental genetic difference. What does that have to do with anything genetic related? None. All right. Prokaryotic mRNA has a five prime GTP cap. It doesn't. It doesn't have that. Okay. Eukaryotic mRNA has a five prime cap and poly A tail and has a splicing. Prokaryotes do not undergo splicing. Prokaryotic ribosomes differ from eukaryotic ribosomes. That's true. They do differ, but that's not the genetic difference. All right. In eukaryotes, each gene has its own transcription initiation site. This is the best answer. Process elimination, guys. Remember, this is not answering the question. Look at what the question is asking, guys. That will help you, you know, eliminate these silly mistakes that you guys possibly do. Okay, because I was there. I made a bunch of silly mistakes. All right, until I really understood what the question was asking. Really focused in on that. And then silly mistakes went bye-bye. <laughs> okay, let's keep going. In miRNA directed gene silencing, a small RNA binds to an mRNA and directs degradation of the mRNA or prevents translation of the mRNA. Cool, I knew this already. That's from my content review. You should know what miRNA is. Which of the following terms describes this process through which binding occurs? Hybridization. Okay, I knew that right away. Hybridization is this. This is hybridization. You've seen it in many different scenarios. Okay, you see it when making uh, complementary DNA, um, the DNA strands binding together, double strand DNA. Like this is this is hybridization. It's literally just let's say you have a G, C, T, A. Okay, the other DNA strand, it's going to bind to this DNA strand. It's going to hybridize to this DNA strand. Hybridize just means the complementary pair just bonding together. That's what it is. This is hybridization. Okay, that's just what it is. Don't get it. Don't overthink. All right, hybridization. Elongation transcription, definitely not. Definitely not. RNA polymerization, no. No, it's hybridization. All right. Let me know how many you got right. Hopefully you got all of them right. And we'll see you for the next video. More practice coming at you guys.